welcome. Um, it's so nice to be with you again. I'm Hilary, Pastor Derek's wife at Oxford Bible Church. And last week um, we were talking about the Holy Spirit and um, we were saying that the Holy Spirit, he's, he's not a breath or a feeling or a wind. I know he's been described like that, but he is a person. He is God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And he's here on earth with us. And he is the most important person on the face of this earth. As I said, Father, God and our Lord Jesus Christ, they are in heaven. But the Holy Spirit is here. He is our helper. And he is the one that enables us to welcome and highly esteem, yes, love our Heavenly Father's correction. I really mean that because God has brought me to a place where I can honestly say, Father, I so appreciate your correction, your reproof, and even your rebuke, Father, because it's always for my good. And it's usually to set me free from something that's held me bound. Because unforgiveness is a terrible thing. Um, and to hold unforgiveness actually invites sickness and disease and disaster into our lives. Um, and the Holy Spirit is here to help us to forgive those who've sinned against us. And he's the one, I, I'm going to come back to that a little later on. Um, the Holy Spirit is the one who stops us when we're about to do something that will bring shame to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you see, we're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Um, and I feel to share this with you as a personal experience, not to say, oh, look what's happened in my life, but just in case you've ever been tempted this way or it ever comes into your life, that the Holy Spirit will be there with you and he will help you. Um, and he will stop you doing something really dangerous. Um, my father had had died um, and I was my daddy's little girl. Um, my mummy was really very, very unwell. Um, she had Alzheimer's and it's the long goodbye and it's a terrible, terrible disease. But you know, the amazing thing is that sometimes she had moments of absolute lucidity. And she said to me one day, she said, oh, it's so frustrating. It's so difficult to be able to put into words what I want to say. And then she reverted to really just speaking gobbledygook. Um, and I remember when, um, I asked Derek to ask my mother's permission because I wanted to honour her, whether she understood the situation or not. She'd never seen him in her life. And she looked at him and she said to him, you've come to ask my permission to marry Hillary. How's that? So the spirit of God was in her and I'm convinced that he comforted her many, many times but she didn't have the faith to believe for healing. And honestly, I didn't either. Whenever there's a failure, it's never God that isn't giving the healing because Jesus has paid for it. It's our failure. And it's always been my failure if I failed to receive healing. It's not like we're trying to get healing down. Healing is here and the Holy Spirit is here living inside us, helping us to receive that wonderful healing. And so um, to go back again, my mom was in a nursing home. My father had died. I'd been given all my mother's sleeping pills and I was really depressed. I was living on my own, but I was blessed because my father had given me a lovely little house in Cowley. And I remember um, walking out of the kitchen and I was going to go upstairs to get the pills. I was going to swallow the lot. And suddenly inside of me, there was this strong voice that said, you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. And immediately the suicide just left. So I'm convinced that it's a spirit, actually. And that thing left me and has never, ever returned. And I just want to pray right now, if anyone has been tempted to end their life because they feel rubbish. 
You're not. You are amazing. God has a wonderful plan for your life. Do not take your own life. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against those spirits of suicide, you lying devils and demons. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind you and I cast you away from that person in Jesus' name. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, please come upon them powerfully. Fill them as you filled me with your love, your joy, knowing that God has a wonderful purpose for them in Jesus' name. So the Holy Spirit will stop us when we're about to do something uh, that would bring shame to the name of Jesus. Um, and he's also the one that comforts us. I know I said in last time that we were together that calm means with and forte means strength. And I'm sure you all know that. Um, he fills us with inner strength. When we're assaulted verbally, and some people can be really, really cruel and they will look you straight in the eye and they will tell you what rubbish you are and how wrong you are, etc., etc., etc. Even Christians or people who say they're Christians are able to do that and that hurts even more. Um, and also we will suffer persecution for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's a blessing. It's an honor to suffer for him. Um, and so if I give you, uh, no, I'm going to give you, thank you, Lord. I want to give you an illustration, actually, of how he comforts us and strengthens us. Um, because uh, when you're afraid of, of, of anything, and, and Pastor Derek and I, we were out with family um, and they were quite posh, you see, posher than us. And they took us to this private cinema. Um, uh, it, it, it was a good cinema, I promise you. It wasn't one of these spooky ones. Uh, but you had to belong to the club to go to. Um, and we were told very strictly, no, no, no talking. You, um, you know, you behave absolutely properly here. And if you want to go and spend a penny, you do not. You do not get up and you do not leave. You stay put. And so, of course, we were enjoying the film and we didn't realise because if we looked at a film together, we, we'd chat to each other about the film. And both of us, neither of us realised that this is what we're doing. You see, when you get into a habit, sometimes you really don't know what you're doing. Um, and the first that I knew of it was um, was the, the lady relative. Um, and she really was a lovely person and she had a beautiful face, but <laughs> not at that particular moment. And she turned round and with such force because she was incantable with rage because we had embarrassed them in front of their friends and she hissed at me she said if you don't stop talking they'll throw you out and I've never felt fear in all my life I thought I was going to pass out I really did I thought you know I thought everything was going to go black and I was going, going to faint but immediately right in the center of my being was this power and you know when you see a fountain when it it's turned on and it begins to rise it was like that inside of me and it pushed out all the fear and all the terror and all the feeling of I've, I've just lost control of my body I think I'm going to pass out that's the power of the Holy Spirit and he was merciful and kind to me because they'd have been even more cross with me if I had fainted. And so he's the one um, who will fill you with mighty strength if and when fear hits you and hits your body and you feel as though you're going to collapse. What he did for me, honestly, he will do the same for you. Um, and let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. And being assembled together, um, Jesus commanded his disciples not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Um, 
And uh, that's not really quite the question they should have asked. And Jesus said to them, and he says it to us too, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the very end of the earth. You know, it's good for us to remember what the disciples were like when Jesus was taken captive. Um, Peter denied him. He denied him three times. And do you know, uh, I think it's best for us not to judge Peter if when we read that, it could well be us under that fear of being taken and put to death. Um, and the others uh, followed at a great distance. But, you know, after the Holy Spirit came upon them and filled them with the power of God, they were bold. I mean, they were bold. They got beaten um, by the religious Jews and they went off rejoicing that they'd been counted worthy to suffer for the sake of Jesus. That's when the Holy Spirit was living inside them. And so it is the same for you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. And the Holy Spirit, when you think there were about 120 of them, gave them the ability to communicate the gospel to, the, to people who'd never heard it probably before. And it was wonderful because they were speaking in the languages because um, it was the time um, of, of the Passover um, and there were Jews who come from all over the world and they all got all these different languages and dialects and they were hearing these 120 speaking in their own languages that they had never learned. And so when we pray in tongues, it is a proper language, but we've never learnt it. For instance, And I think I was saying, I don't know that I was saying, Jesus is the love of my life. Um, but we don't know what we're saying. And for a very good purpose, because when we are praying the will of God, um, Often if we knew what we were praying, we'd spoil it all uh, and get in the Lord's way. But we're able to pray God's perfect will into our life, into the lives of our loved ones um, and not know what it's about. And also, our Heavenly Father, he's an absolute gentleman. If you are praying for somebody and there is something in their life that they would be embarrassed for you to know, God's not going to tell you. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, by praying in tongues in a language that you don't understand, you are able to pray for them to be set free and not know anything about it because it's private between them and the Lord. Oh, the Holy Spirit is an absolute gentleman. And so um, let's read Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to verse 18. Uh, Jesus had told his disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe will, be cast, will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. He warned them. He told them this would happen. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. By the way, taking up serpents is not playing with them. Um, we remember Paul, a serpent grabbed hold of his hand um, when he was uh, on the Isle of M Malta and they were waiting for him to die and he shook it off into the fire um, and nothing happened to him. That's what it means, take up serpents. If a serpent bites you and you're believing in, in the Lord, then it will not harm you. But don't go play with them. Um, if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt you. And I have heard testimonies of young people um, who were turning from the religion of their family and had become Christians. And the father had actually poisoned this boy's food um, twice on two occasions and nothing happened. 
And so when the boy plucked up courage to share about the Lord and that Jesus was powerful, the father said, yes, I know, I've tried to poison you twice and it had no effect on you. And that was a testimony to him. And so um, these are not idle words that Jesus is speaking. And he says, at the same time, he says, they will, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. As a Christian, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is in you, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And you see the physical Jesus, he only had two hands with which to bless the children and heal the sick and set the, the captive free and feed the hungry. But now through the Holy Spirit who dwells in the lives, actually in our bodies of the followers, the disciples of the Lord Jesus, there are now millions, millions doing the work of the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. You see that Jesus's ministry was at once limited to the area, I think, around Palestine. Um, it didn't go very far, but now because of all the people who've been converted through the ministry of Paul and, and the disciples, um, it, it, you know, that the, the works of Jesus are in Africa, Australia, China, USA, the Bahamas, the United Kingdoms, all over the world, at the same time. And the purpose is that the kingdom of God um, shall be, um, the power of the kingdom of God should be upon the earth for people in all spheres of life. Um, and how important it is for us to behave in the workplace because when we're in the workplace, we are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Spirit of God is inside us to enable us to do our job better than anybody else. Um, but if we slack off, um, if we steal things that belong to the company, and when I'm talking about that is actually using the, the company's computer to uh, chat to your friends. That actually, I'm sorry, it's, it's not so much a sharing as theft. Um, and actually the unsaved, even if they do it and they see you do it, they don't think much of you as a Christian. And I'm sure that there's nobody who's watching this who does that, but just in case you're tempted. Um, the way we, we behave in the workplace, actually our behavior should be bringing glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is there to help us. If there's something in work that you, you don't understand or you're finding difficult, just ask, Holy Spirit, help me, show me what, show me what to do. And I had a friend and, and she was a brilliant at the computer, but she said sometimes things were put before her and she said she had no idea how to solve this problem in the company. But she would pray and she said the Holy Spirit would show her exactly what to do and she'd never thought of it. And so the Holy Spirit, um, he makes, it makes, how can I say, heaven on earth to be a possibility. It's not quite the same, but it can be like heaven on earth. The way it can be heaven on earth is when you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Um, and everybody, everybody needs the Holy Spirit. Um, I know I've said this before and I will say it again. The Holy Spirit is the most important person on the earth. Please let us treat him as he deserves. And when he lives in you, heaven is your country actually. And you have the power of heaven inside you. I wanted to share a testimony of the story of uh, the late J.F. Kennedy, um, uh, his little son. And it's a picture really of us and our Heavenly Father um, because through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, we have become children if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are a child of God. And so this story is about J.F. Kennedy. Um, it was when he was the president of the USA. He was in the, the Oval Office with all his, you know, his cabinet. And at that particular time in history, it was the most dangerous situation in the world at that time. And it was called the Bay of Pigs. And it was an issue with Cuba and the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons. I understand that the Soviet Union had moved their nuclear weapons onto the island of Cuba, which uh, could take some really big pot shots, so to speak, at, well, destroy the USA. 
and it was very, very dangerous. And so they're having this desperately um, a charged uh, meeting with these very important people. And the story goes that the door swung open and a little boy ran across the room. He ran around the members of the cabinet and threw himself into the lap of the president. And all the important members of the cabinet were suddenly speechless. I mean, it was, wow, what has happened? And the little boy looked up at his father, the most um, powerful leader at that time in the world. And he said, Daddy, who are these people? Um, and President Kennedy said, these are my cabinet, son. Um, and the boy looked at this powerful group of men and he just stared at them. And then he pointed to his father and said, this is my daddy. At that moment, it didn't matter who the president was meeting. His son had complete access to the father. And the same is true in a, your relationship with your heavenly father. He's always thrilled to see you. And my goodness, he is the most important person in heaven on earth. So every day with the help of the Holy Spirit in our life, it enables us to know the will of God for us. Every day with the help of the Holy Spirit, we, we need to ask our heavenly Father God, what do you want done today? Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to do the will of God. Help me to be... Um, a, a good ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. Um, and then so often we say, what do you want me to do today? And dash off and do what we think we need to do. And if you are a busy person, it's somehow the, um, the urgent pushes out the important. But with the Holy Spirit, if we make time, even getting up earlier, and first thing in the morning is the best time, honestly it is, because then the Holy Spirit will pray through you for what's going to happen during the day. And I, I promise you, he will save you from bad situations if we will take him um, and, and, you know, love him and fellowship with him. Or if the bad situation does happen, he will give you a way through it and he will be your strength and you will not be defeated by it. And be ready to listen to him. Listen to that still, small voice. So often we think it will come with a rush and a bang and, and fire and everything. But actually God will speak to you by his Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the still, small voice. And somehow it seems to come from the very depth of you. Um, I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me um, Someone was being really unpleasant, really unpleasant. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't allow what they're saying to touch you. I love you and you are beautiful in my eyes. And do you know, those words fell to the ground. They were meant to destroy they were, but they couldn't because the Holy Spirit spoke and told me. But we need that time, make time. He is the most important person on the face of this earth. And therefore, he should be given our prime time. Do you remember these adverts for prime time? Prime time belongs to him. And worshipping our heaven, the Holy Spirit will help us to worship the, the Heavenly Father um, in spirit and in truth. He will help us to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. Because on our own, it's impossible for us to love God as he deserves. And the Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship with us. You know, when, if you meet your best friend, um, I don't think that they would be your best friend for very long if when you sit down, you know, and you sit and you have coffee together and you tell them what a terrible day you've had and how, you know, this is wrong and that's wrong. And you tell them, I want you to do this and I want you to do that and I want you to do the other. I don't think you would have a best friend for very long. Please, we need to teach, uh, treat the Holy Spirit as our very, very best friend. 
He's never going to leave you. He's never going to walk off in a half. But there are things that will grieve him. Um, but I want to talk about that um, when I see you next week. Um, but because of the Holy Spirit, do you know we can be worshipping God in our heart all through the day? It's easier for those of us who have, um, you know, jobs to do like shopping, washing, cooking, cleaning, manual jobs rather than someone that has to be using their mind a lot. But we can stay in fellowship with him, in love with him, and we can actually be worshipping him. If there's a moment in your day, maybe you're waiting for a bus, just waiting for something, couldn't we could worship him and say, Father God, I love you. I worship you, Father God. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me on the cross. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I love you. You're my very, very best friend. I, I want to please you. Show me what you want to do today. Father God, I love you. Praise God. Father God, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that those, these lovely people, Lord God, that you bless them, you heal them, you deliver them, Lord, from the attacks of the enemy. Father God, that they come into such a close relationship with you, with the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are their very best friend. And my prayer is that when they wake up in the morning, each and every one of you will come out of your heart and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with me. In Jesus' name, amen. We all need healing at some point in our life and we need to know how to receive healing from God. And so I've written this book, Getting Healed, to really help you understand how you can receive healing from God and how to help others also receive healing from God. And it's available in book form and it's also available as a CD series and it will really build your faith to encourage you to, to, to receive God's healing power into your body. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service. Or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, ox 37 qh All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products, where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.